Live from Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan, TV10 Sports presents the National Invitation Basketball Tournament. Tonight, the Michigan State Spartans make their first NIT appearance ever as they host the Falcons of Bowling Green State University. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Farm Bureau Insurance Group, making your future a little more predictable. By Jack Dykstra Ford, mid-Michigan's largest Ford dealer. By Wendy's, try their tasty new bacon cheeseburger. By Capital Federal Savings, with something better for your future. By Delta Dental, number one, for a number of good reasons. And by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. Everybody, I'm Tim Stout. Welcome to the 46th National Invitation Basketball Tournament. We have a sellout crowd of 10,000 here in Jenison Fieldhouse tonight as Michigan State makes its first NIT appearance ever against the Falcons of Bowling Green State. These teams have played five times in the past. Michigan State has won four. Bowling Green's been in the NIT eight times, Jim. They have a very good ball club. They're 21 and eight coming in tonight. They think they can beat Michigan State Go on to the second round. They are the class ball club in the Mid-American Conference, although they did not win the conference tournament championship. They had a 15 and three record this year, 21 and eight overall, and they beat Ohio University, the conference tournament champion, twice by 14 and 17 points. All right, now there's, there's already good news. Michigan State can play home Monday night against Fresno State if they win this game tonight. So we've got a great one coming up. Michigan State and Bowling Green, nice to have you with us. And we'll be back with the starting lineups from Jenison Fieldhouse in just a moment on TV 10, your NIT Spartan Basketball Tournament Station. We're thinking about that new kind of life insurance from Farm Bureau Life. Universal Life? Mm -hmm. Would you believe we beat you to it? Tom signed us up two weeks ago. He told us that when and how much we pay in is up to us. Right. And you know, if we need to, we can draw cash out of the cash value fund. Mm -hmm. That interest rate is great. Universal Life from Farm Bureau Insurance Group. Another way to make your future a little more predictable. Jack Dykes Report has red hot deals right now on 1983 cars and trucks. Hi, I'm Abby Wilkie, and we're smashing the prices on all 83 Ford trucks, like this beautiful Ford Bronco. Hit it, Brutus! And the deals are exploding on new cars, Escorts, 40 XPs, and Mustangs. The prices are low, and we make the terms right for you. And that ain't no gold, so get rolling to South Logan and Jack Dykes Report. Wendy's new fish fillet sandwich is made from pure fillet of fish, so it's moist and flaky, like a fine fillet should be. Then lightly breaded with a seasoned cracker meal, so it's crispy and delicious. I used to eat the fish sandwich served at that other famous place, you know, the square fish. But I just keep wondering, uh, how do square fish swim? You want something better? You Wendy's kind of people. At Capital Federal, we're helping bring prosperity just around your corner. Our insured money market account gives you an interest in your community. Of course, you get money market returns with an account that's insured. But with Capital, your money stays here in the community, providing local home mortgages and consumer loans for you and your neighbors. The insured money market account from Capital Federal Savings. Because a healthy local economy begins with you. Tim Stout with Jim Hornberger back here at Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing where we're just about set to introduce the starting lineups for tonight's first round NIT basketball game. And here with the starting lineups is the public address announcer, Eric Oferseth. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Jenison Fieldhouse, home of Michigan State basketball. We are pleased this evening to welcome you to the first round NIT game between the Falcons of Bowling Green and the Spartans of Michigan State. 
returning for Bowling Green at forward, 6'6", Jr. from Cleveland, Ohio, number 32, Colin Irish. For Michigan State at forward, 6'8", Jr. from Saranac, 20, Ben Power. For the Falcons and the other forward, 6'5", Jr. from Warren, Ohio, 22, David Jenkins. For Michigan State, 6'5", freshman from Detroit, 44, Patrick Ford. At center for Bowling Green, 6'7", junior from Mount Corey, Ohio, 25, Bill Fain. For Michigan State at center, 7-foot junior from Detroit, 42, Kevin Willis. At guard for the Falcons, 6'2", sophomore from Detroit, 24, Keith Taylor. For Michigan State, at guard, 6'1", freshman from Plymouth, Indiana, 25, Scott Skiles. At the other guard for Bowling Green, 5'9", senior from Canton, Ohio, number 10, David Greer. For Michigan State, 6'2", sophomore from Lansing, 11, Sam Vincent. Bowling Green State, coached by Jim Weiner. Michigan State by Judd Heathcote. So there you have it, Bowling Green, uh, coached by John Weiner, Judd Heathcote from Michigan State, both coaches in their seventh year on the job. Neither of these uh, coaches has ever faced each other. Jim, we have not mentioned the 30-second clock. It is in effect tonight. It will not be used in overtime. They'll turn it off in the last four minutes of the game. There is no three-point basket tonight. There is no red, white, and blue ball. There are the clocks. As you can see, if their count is at four minutes and 29 seconds to go, the clock will immediately be turned off at that point. So it really goes off with 4.29 to go. Michigan State has some good news today. The Spartans will host Fresno State Monday night. Fresno State Monday night at 8 o'clock here in Jenison if the Spartans win tonight. If Michigan State loses tonight, Bowling Green will play at Fresno State. And there is also a very good shot. The Spartans could play a third round game here in Jenison Thursday night uh, against, of course, a team to be determined. But if Michigan State wins tonight, the Spartans definitely will host Fresno State 8 o'clock Monday night here on TV 10. Jim? Uh, Coach John Weinert is an outspoken advocate of basic basketball. He doesn't like the shot clock and no three-point shot. And talking to him yesterday, he said that they've had trouble adjusting to the 30-second clock in practice. Now, the officials tonight are all from the Atlantic 10 Conference. Jim Murray, Terry Stout, and Jim Wright. The shot outside to start the game is up and down by Bill Fain, the fine center. He's only 6'7", but he can shoot, and this is a good passing team. He had a brother that was all conference two years ago at Bowling Green, and he is a fine outside shooter. He led the MAC conference in field goal percentage, shooting 55%. Set Skiles inside to Ben Tower, and Michigan State has tied the game. Michigan State runs that play many times to start a ball game. You can see Bowling Green likes to get it off in a hurry. That one by Colin Irish is no good. And the foul is called on Bowling Green as they go back down the floor. Bill Fain, the 6'7 center. This is a big game for Kevin Willis because he has a tremendous height advantage over the Falcons. He stands seven feet, and Bill Fain is the tallest player among the starters at 6'7. Michigan State's offensive strategy to start the ball game is to pound the ball into Willis, make them stop Kevin Willis. Bowling Green is falling back into a 1-2-2 zone. They're going to be overplaying the passing lanes, forcing Michigan State to shoot from the outside, if Kevin possible. Willis cannot hit it. Patrick Ford getting the start tonight. Back off the glass. You can see Willis gets the tip in, and Michigan State has taken its first lead of the night. They're going to have to keep him off the glass. Poor defensive triangle there by the Falcons as Willis snuck in from the weak side. David Greer pounds it away. Now Michigan State on the run. They've got a three-on-one advantage, and Sam Vincent is fouled. That one will go against Keith Taylor. He is a sophomore out of Detroit Southwestern High School. He is the only Michigan starter on this team. He played as a senior at Southwestern with Antoine Joubert, who was a sophomore at the time. And Leslie Rockymore. They got as far as the quarterfinals. They were 18 and 3 that year. There was an error in judgment there by Sam. Uh, Scott Skiles was ahead of him and always give the ball up to someone that's ahead of you wide open. And he did not do it. 
If Michigan State wins tonight, we've made arrangements to speak live with Judd Heathcote immediately following the game. So we'll have Judd on to comment right after the game if Michigan State would win. Vincent now gives the Spartans a 5-2 lead. They were seven-point favorites coming in tonight. There is one other NIT first-round game tonight. That's Arizona State uh, playing Fullerton State, and that ends the first round. Baseline jumper is pounded down by Keith Taylor, and it's now 5-4. Most improved ball player this year on the Falcon Ball Club. He averaged a little over 10 points per ball game. They have very good balance on the ball club. The leading scorer is Jenkins, 19 points per ball game. Colin Arish is 15 points a game. Skiles. And Michigan State has lengthened its lead to 7-4. To That's his comfort zone against a 1-2-2 zone or 2-3. He can take it all the way out to about 25 feet. Michigan State won five of its last six games, but lost in here last Saturday night to Iowa, 75-57. But the Spartans are making their first ever NIT appearance. And are their fans ever fired up? This place is jam-packed. And it's because of the fans that Michigan State will get another home game. The shot is way off by Bill Fain, and it comes out to Ben Tower. Now Michigan State will up-tempo it a little bit. Skiles dumps it off to Sam Vincent. And with 17.30 to go, he'll set it up. Michigan State leading 7-4. Spartans trail 2-0. Taught him at 2, went ahead 4-2, and a bled ever since. High feet inside, a little too high. Out of bounds, I think it will go back to Bowling Green. The Falcons beat Ohio U by 17 and 14 points during the regular season, and then they were upset in the MAC championship game by three, 59-56. That put Ohio into the NCAA tournament where they beat Illinois State last night, 51-49. And a major 49. upset in the NCAA. Uh, right now, Bowling Green is overplaying the passing lanes a lot, and they're vulnerable to high feeds or lobs from the Spartans. Turnaround jump shot outside is beautifully put up and down by Colin Irish, the junior from Cleveland Cathedral Latin High School, and now it's 7-6. to six. They felt that he was going to be one of the premier players to ever come out of the MAC conference, but he's had two knee operations on his left knee. You can see the bandage when we get a close-up, and it's hindered his progress quite a bit, but he's still averaging 15 points per ball game and 7.5 and rebounds. 16.40 to go, high feed to Patrick Ford who will set it back up outside. Now Ford baseline, eight footer is good. Patrick Ford, two for him. Michigan State now has five different players who've scored and it's nine to six. David Greer, number 10, the fine little playmaker, who is the all-time Mid-American Conference assist leader, and Scott Skiles has the personal foul. Now, and there's a technical foul on Judd Heathcote. These are Atlantic 10 Conference officials. They're not Big Ten officials, and they are not used to having coaches gripe and they are not going to put up with, I guess, any guff tonight. That's the fastest Judd's had a technical Ooh. in his life. You can call that guy quick draw McGraw. I'll tell you, the Big Ten officials will put up with grief all season long from anybody. David, David Greer, Greer hits the free throw. Has been in the top ten assist men in the country the last three seasons. You know, Jim, I wondered before the game with new officials who we've never seen, Big Ten officials will put up with absolute total abuse. They will almost never give a 10 now. But these are Atlantic 10 Conference officials. They do not know what Big Ten coaches, Mid-American coaches are like. I haven't seen John Weinert yet, but you know all about Judd, and he got one slapped on him immediately. And boy, I'll tell you, in the Big Ten, nobody would have batted an eye at him. Michigan State still by one, and on the coach's technical, the ball goes back to Bowling Green. Shot off balance inside, a foul is called first on Ben Tower, I believe. Excuse me, Willis. Be his first personal foul, that's the second team foul on the Spartans. Skiles has the other. Irish is trying to entice Willis to come out higher on the floor, and Willis right now is playing into the strategy somewhat. He should drop back and give him that outside shot. David Greer throws a knuckleball up there, and it's good. Four for Greer, and now Bowling Green has a 10-9 to lead. His number one goal, he said in basketball, is to make his teammates look good, and he's very good at it. He came out of Canton McKinley, the same high school that produced the two water bug guards for Ohio State, Stokes and Taylor. There's Michigan State's first turnover. Bowling Green Plus in a two-on-one. Greer has it blocked away, and Michigan State will go the other way. Beautiful defensive play by the Spartans. Forward to Skiles. Skiles dumps it up out of bounds, and it'll go back to Bowling Green. Case but of overpassing there by Skiles. He had the open shot, but patched it up. 
All right, we have a timeout on the floor. 15-29 to go first half. A lot of action. Bowling Green 10, Michigan State 9 on the Spartan NIT Basketball Station. A quarter of a century ago, Delta Dental Plant of Michigan was just about the only group dental plant in Michigan. Then other plans came along, trying to match Delta in fitting a group's individual needs. But a curious thing happened. The more new plans there were, the more Delta grew. So that today, Delta isn't just Michigan's number one dental plan. For a lot of people, it's still the only dental plan. Coming up. Excuse me. My mother oh. sure looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Mighty tasty, Slim. Plum, where's the trip, Colorado? We come a thousand miles for this hair Stroh's bear. Not surprising. Happens every day. Yeah? Excuse, excuse me. I say, old chap, a cold bottle of Stroh's, please. <laughs> I like you. Tim Stout, along with Jim Hornberger, back here. At uh, Jenison Fieldhouse, Scott Skiles is now out. Larry Pollock is in for Michigan State. We have a high school halftime score, the regional final Class A at Kalamazoo. Lansing Everett is leading Benton Harbor 38-36. Now they're putting Vincent on David Greer. He has a little bit more foot speed than Scott does. There was a possible walk that was ignored by the official. Well, I'll tell you, Judd has not been deterred any in talking with that official, the one that called him. And Larry Pollock has a foul right away. Larry was out of position. He didn't have a good defensive denial position to cut the lead. I was talking about Greer before coming out of Canton McKinley, and they had Stokes and Taylor. All right, take a look again here if we have a chance. Reaching there he in is. He's caught reaching in out of position. All also right. out of Canton McKinley came Nick Weatherspoon and Phil Hubbard. All right, here's the shot blocked away by Willis. That's two block shots for him. Put back up, and again, Michigan State does a good job on the boards. All right, down they go here. Here's Ben Tower, puts up a 12-footer. That'll be way short. And it comes out to the Falcons, David Jenkins. 14.48 to go, 10-9, Bowling Green. Boy, this David Greer has tremendous speed. Baseline jumper, that is short. It comes out to Kevin Willis. Ahead to Vincent. Boy, they love to run in this game with this clock. Vincent is scores as well, and I believe it counts it down. Brilliant move by Sam Vincent. A great example of the physical strength of Sam Vincent. When he has the ball in his hands, he's like a vice. He challenges you, takes it right over Irish, and gets the roll. All right, that's the first foul on Cole and Irish. Three team fouls now, and Vincent puts Michigan State ahead 11 to 10. May be the strongest guard in the Big Ten. Six foot two, 190 pounds. All right, Bowling Green has its first substitution of the night as Vincent scores his fourth point, 12-10. Paul Abendroth, a 6'6 junior, number 43, is now in the game, and Bowling Green has taken Cole and Irish out. Irish has had knee problems his entire career. Boy, this Greer is tremendously fast, but this time it's stolen away, and that's Bowling Green's first turnover of the night. Spartans with a chance to go up by four. Remember, there is no three-point shot, and there is a 30-second clock, which is recycled after every field goal attempt. Bowling Green's doing a good job right now of overplaying and cutting off the passing lanes. Vincent, little 18 footer, yes, Sam Vincent. Six points for Sam, and now it's 14 to 10 Spartans. That's where Sam has really refined his game this year. He can get that shot off up to 20 feet without putting it on the hardwood. All right, Bowling Green moving now against Ben Tower. Tipped yes. out of bounds off the Falcons, and it goes back to Michigan State. A reminder again, if the Spartans win tonight, they will play host to Fresno State at 8 o'clock in a second-round game here on Monday night. And they could also host a third-round game Thursday night. That's a very good possibility. We're going to talk with Doug Weaver, the Spartan Athletic Director, at halftime, and he'll fill us in. And by the way, tickets will go on sale first thing tomorrow morning to the general public and season ticket holders if Michigan State wins. Overpassing there by Larry Pollack. Good heady move by Ben Tower. Back it on out. Set it up. All right, Vincent, he's open again. And it's pulled out of there by the Falcons. Colin Irish, who's back in the game. Had a good look at the basket. Missed the shot. Greer 
Setting it up with Keith Taylor on the wing. Remember, Taylor, 24, is from Detroit Southwestern, only a sophomore. Baseline jumper is up by Jenkins. No, and it's pulled out of there by Sam Vincent. Michigan State's done a good job on the defensive Good lead board. pass. Here's Ford. Boy, that's got a rainbow on it. Tipped up and in by Kevin Willis. Four points for Willis, and it's 16 to 10. Michigan State's biggest lead. Willis's forte is running the court. He gets up and down it better than any seven-footer in collegiate basketball. All 94 feet. Now they go around Tower, but it's put away and kicked outside where Bill Fain scores four points on for Fain, and it's 16 to 12. Pollock puts it up. Boy, Jim, they have any trouble adjusting to this clock. I'll tell you, <laughs> this thing may never go off tonight. The basket counts, and he's fouled. Let's wait and see. Uh... No, they're not going to give him no the deuce. No, they're not. Crowd doesn't like it, obviously. Skiles will check back in for Michigan State, and Ben Tower will go out. The other thing I notice is these guys are winded running up and down the floor. It's almost they're like playing beat the clock instead of beat Bowling Green or beat Michigan State. They still have to run their offense. They look a little impatient. Well, I don't know what that play was, but it didn't work. And Michigan State has its third turnover, and that's going to go down the other end and be probably missed the layup. David Jenkins doesn't get it to go, and Michigan State's running the other way again. Boy, this has been a very loosely played game so far, and we have had a lot of scoring. Michigan State, with 12 minutes to go, already has 16 points. Michigan State is doing an excellent job of limiting Bowling Green to one shot and then getting the defensive rebound and beating them in the transition game. Cord, no on that one. Down comes David Greer. He's going to say, I guess I'll let it go. And as you see, they battle for the rebound. Michigan State screens them off, and it'll go back to the Spartans. Timeout with 11.39 to go. It's Michigan State 16, Bowling Green 12. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan NIT tournament station. Back when Farm Bureau insurance agents first began helping folks in Michigan, life seemed much more simple. The world has changed since then. But people's insurance needs are about the same. Protection for things we own and help for those we love. Your Farm Bureau insurance agent cares and can make your road into tomorrow a bit smoother. Farm Bureau Insurance Group, we're helping to make your future a little more predictable. The art of getting rich is learning how to get the most out of the money you already have. For instance, if your checking account isn't earning interest, it should be. With a NOW account at Capital Federal, you'll earn interest on the money that's just sitting in your checking account. And with a low $100 minimum balance, our NOW account will help you get the most out of the money you already have. The NOW account at Capital Federal Savings. Something better for your checking. Tim Stahl with Jim Hornberger. You're looking at part of the crowd of 10,004. Michigan State and Harvard are tied in hockey 2-2 after one period. We've given you Everett 38, Benton Harbor 36 at halftime. And here it is 16 to 12. The Spartans are leading over Bowling Green. Derek Pirey comes in and Patrick Ford sits down. Ford played pretty well, Jim, while he was in there. He did play well. He came up with a couple of good opportunity shots. There's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball, not a lot of pattern basketball right now for both teams. Skiles outside, no, and it's put back up by Perry, and Willis, well, Willis was fouled. I believe he's going to get the call, and he does. I thought he was fouled. Bill Fain gets it. That's his second. They've got to keep Kevin Willis off the glass. Kevin's very active inside. He snuck in from the weak side, gets inside position, as you can see on the replay there, and Fain is not doing a good job of defensive boxing out. He's not getting a piece of Willis right now. All right, that's already five team fouls on Bowling Green, and Michigan State has called for traveling. Four turnovers on the Spartans, and Bowling Green has two. Sam Vincent got the ball on the inbounds play, but had no place to go and was called for the travel violation. 32 teams began the NIT tournament. There are now 18 left after 14 first-round games. The shot is up, no good, off the glass by David Jenkins, and it's pulled down by the Spartans. Skiles on the break. Vincent dumps it inside, and the Spartans turn it over. Willis tonight is relentless on the glass at both ends. He's doing a great job. He led the Big Ten in rebounding this year, averaging over 10 
per ball game, and he was the only player in the conference to have 20 or more in a game this season, and he did it twice. All right, the 30-second clock has not gone off yet. And, and it won't. won't. And it won't. I doubt it. You're right. Shot is up no good by Taylor. Boy, Bowling Green is normally a very good shooting team. They were cold against Ohio, and they're cold tonight. Pollock puts it up. Good. Larry Pollock. You know, I feel like this is an NBA game, the way they're up and down the floor. It's almost one-on-one -on -one basketball sometimes because they're so conscious of that clock. 18 to 12, 10 20 to go in the first half. We've had some big scores. South Carolina beat Old Dominion 100 to 90. Whistle inside, Larry Pollock gets the foul. Larry got beaten across the lane once again, and he's out of position. Michigan State foul, 35, Larry Pollock. Judd Heathcote has not had a team in a tournament since the NCAA championship year of 1979. Bowling Green is in its eighth NIT tournament. This yep. is the second tournament game to ever be held in Jenison Fieldhouse. The NC2A 1963 Mideast Regionals were held here. That shot was no good by Colin Irish, but the Falcons bring it back down. Inside they go, drive is up and good. That time by Keith Taylor. Four for him, and it's 18-14. That ended a long dry spell. Nice job there of challenging the big man by Taylor. He only goes 150 pounds, 6'2", but he took it on in and was not... Stop. And there's an illegal pick as called against Kevin Willis. Well, now Judd Heathcote's going to talk with the official about this again. Remember, Judd already has one technical foul tonight. So that's six turnovers on Michigan State to just two for Bowling Green. 9.47 to go, first half. Michigan State 18, Bowling Green 14. A jam-packed crowd tonight, 10,004. It's the second largest opening night crowd in the first round of the NIT. Nebraska drew 12,000 last night because it has a bigger arena. And Michigan State, if it wins, will be home here Monday night against Fresno State. Falcons trying to hang on here. Out of bounds, it goes back to BG. Michigan State right now is not getting any help and recover defense from their teammates. They're getting beat, and their teammates have to step out defensively and stop the penetration. All right, Patrick Ford in. Sam Vincent goes out. Sam has six points, and he gets a fine hand from the crowd here. Greer puts a lot of pressure on a defense. He's their little floor general. He can orchestrate an offense about as well as any point guard around. Inside ball, nearly stolen away, put back up, no tip, no, and now a whistle and a foul call, and that's on Kevin Willis, I believe, and that's three fouls on Kevin Willis. So right away, he Michigan has State's big advantage is Kevin Willis' height, and he already has three fouls. You know, Jim, I think part of the reason for that is the fact that Bowling Green plays so hard against that clock that it forces the action so much, you have to play harder defense. They have very good ball movement offensively. They play the passing game. A nice jump hook there by Fain. Six points for Bill Fain, and now it's 18-16 Michigan State. Good job there of utilizing his body, keeping his body in between the ball and Perry. Richard Mudd has a sprained knee and may not see any action. He's dressed, but he does have a sprained knee, so he's not in there. So now there's no height advantage for anybody on the floor right now. And Sam Vincent's out of there, so it's not a lot of offense either. Pollock off the glass puts it in. Four points for Larry Pollock, and it's 20 to 16. I love this clock. I absolutely love this 30-second clock. It forces the action, makes teams play hard at both ends of the floor. Jumper is up and good by David Jenkins. Two for him, and it's 20 to 18. That's Jenkins' first two of the evening. He's their leading scorer, all-MAC performer. Very good all-round complete player. Skiles outside. That one falls in. Scott Skiles. Four points for Skiles, 22 to 18. Boy, oh. Greer just went all around Woo. his man, Skiles, and David Greer, beautiful move. Six points for him, and it's 22 to 20. And now Skiles nearly loses it. That's what the players call a dust move. He faked right and then swept around him to the left for the easy basket. A great stutter step move there by Greer. It's about 700 Bowling Green fans here tonight. Let's check the shot clock as Skiles lets it go. Yes, that's Skiles. Six for him, and it's now 24-20. The points are flying on the board now, and Bowling Green has not shot well at all in this game. You joined us late, Judd Heathcote got an early technical against these Atlantic 10 Conference officials. 
Kevin Willis is out with three fouls. And Bowling Green will have it back. Basic mistake there by Polly going up for the basketball with one arm instead of two. All right, we have a timeout. 7.24 to go first half. Michigan State 24, Bowling Green 20. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan NIT tournament station. Introducing Jack Dykstra Ford's Thunderbird Calvary. Leading the roundup of new 83 Fords are, of course, the economical Ford Escort. Riding shotgun are the rough and tough 83 Ford Rangers. Next, we have a beautiful herd of Mustangs, followed by our leader, Chief Thunderbird, with beautiful aerodynamic designs, high mileage, and a luxurious ride. Get rolling to South Logan and test drive the 83 Fords at Jack Dykstra Ford, where you get the best deal in town, and that's no bull. Know what? Now Wendy's is making bacon. No bacon. Bacon? Wendy's is making bacon. Introducing Wendy's Bacon Cheeseburger. Crisp, lean strips of bacon on top of a Wendy's cheeseburger to become Wendy's new hot and juicy bacon cheeseburger. We're taken with bacon. So come try Wendy's new bacon cheeseburger. We're making bacon for Wendy's kind of people. Tim Stout with Jim Hornberger back here at Jenison Fieldhouse. Spartans with a 24-20 lead. Ken Waddell is in the game now for Bowling Green. He's a 6'4 freshman from Toledo. He'll wear number 21. And also Paul Abendroff, number 43, the 6'6 uh, junior, is in the game for Bowling Green. So two changes for Coach John Weinert and his team. Michigan State with a four-point lead, and we're down to 7.20 to go in the first half. Abendroff has been a pleasant surprise this season for the Falcons. He was a walk-on, and now he's earned his way to a tender. Ball is stolen away. Now Pollock looking for help, gets it from Skiles. He stops and pumps. And as they battle for it, it's out of bounds back to Bowling Green. So Bowling Green with a chance to cut it to two as you look at some of this massive crowd on hand tonight. Willis had six rebounds in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. A couple of blocked shots. He was very active. They're clearing out the lane for Greer. Turnaround baseline jumper is no good. Foul inside, and that one will go against Paul Abendroff, his first. And so for the Falcons now, Bill Fain comes back in 25, and 24, Keith Taylor back in. They take Waddell and Abendroth out, the players who had just come in for Coach John Leonard, as you see Derek Perry goes out, and Sam Vincent is back in. 6.45 to go, Judd Heathcote in his seventh season at Michigan State. First time he has coached against Bowling Green, and the same for John Leonard against Michigan State. Still the 1-2-2 zone for Bowling Green, and they're alternating sometimes into a 2-3. Bowling Green with five straight winning seasons. There's Pollock way outside, and he puts it down. Six points for Larry Pollock, and it's 26 to 20. Very good stationary shooter. When he parallels his feet, you must be very cognizant of him putting it up. Now they're trying to work on Pollock inside, and he's going to let it go. Shot is beautiful by David Jenkins. Four for him. Boy, is he quick getting it off. Down they go, Tower is open, and he lays it in. Ben Bowling Tower. Green is getting beat very badly in the transition game. They're not getting back on defense, and State has gotten four easy baskets. 28 to 22, Michigan State over Bowling Green. Spartans have trailed at a couple of moments. Shot way outside, is poured up, no good by Taylor, and it comes out of there to Ben Towers. Doing a good job for Kevin Willis now. Pollock, a little showmanship, and Patrick Ford puts it in. 30-22, Michigan State's biggest lead of the night. Good look-off pass there by Larry Pollock. Now the Falcons' baseline shot, no good. And a, I believe a travel is called. The aura of that shot clock has really forced the up-tempo part of this game. John Weiner, the Bowling Green coach, does not like this clock at all, mostly because he says we don't have time to prepare for it, as Jim mentioned earlier. Michigan State now is in their balanced alignment. Skiles to Sam Vincent, Rainbow won't go. And the Falcons pull it down. Now David Greer will set it up. 
shot outside is pounded up. No good by Bill Faith. Boy, Bowling Green has taken a tremendous number of shots in the first half. They're getting no second shots whatsoever. Skiles against Greer, and that's a mismatch in speed, so he brings it back out. 4.43 to go, 30 to 22, Michigan State by eight. Bowling Green is having to work very hard for their points. Skiles puts it up and in. Eight points for Scott Skiles, Michigan State's biggest lead of the night. Down the floor they go. Jenkins looking for help. They double team him. And now they call double dribble. Bowling Green needs a timeout here. They're in trouble. Ten points down, and John Weinert must have hurt us because he is going to call it. We have timeout on the floor. 4.24 to go. Listen to this crowd. Michigan State 32, Bowling Green 22. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. just for you at Meridian Mall everything we do is just for you at Meridian Mall when you think you've seen it all we give you a little bit more Meridian Mall Meridian Mall A quarter of a century ago Delta Dental Plant of Michigan was just about the only group dental plan in Michigan. Then other plans came along, trying to match Delta in fitting a group's individual needs. But a curious thing happened. The more new plans there were, the more Delta grew. So that today, Delta isn't just Michigan's number one dental plan. For a lot of people, it's still the only dental plan. Tim Stout with Jim Hornberger back at Jenison Fieldhouse. Fullerton State and Arizona State, and that's the final first round game. That'll start about two hours from now out on Tempe, Arizona, and that will complete first round play. The game's played so far. South Florida has defeated Fordham, 81 to 69. That's a good team. Lee Rose, the coach, said that's the biggest win we have had in our history of our school. Vanderbilt beat East Tennessee State. There was some interest in that game. It was funny with a red, white, and blue ball. They threw it out because it was too slippery. They don't have the red, white, and blue ball here because the coaches say it didn't really arrive in time, but I don't think they really wanted to play with it either. It's optional in these preliminary round games. All right, Ford inside. He's quick and he scores. Patrick Ford, a big night. He's got six points. 34 to 22 now, and Michigan State is rolling along. Good entry pass there by Sam Vincent that kept it up in the line of sight of Patrick Ford. The amazing thing is they're doing it with Kevin Willis on the bench, and Skiles has a foul. For Scott, that'll be his second. They're going to call that 80 to 90 percent of the time when you come down on top of the basketball. Well, now Scott says this wasn't a foul. You look and see if we can tell here. He has two fouls, so now David Greer, who's two for two from the line and has six points tonight, is on the line, one and one. That was a 17 foul on Michigan State. Bowling Green has six. The nice thing about Greer is that he's one of the very few players that can lead by example as well as direction, and he's a real catalyst for this ball club. 34-23, Michigan State with an 11-point lead. Now it's 10. So Greer's having a big night so far. Don't forget, Doug Weaver will be with us at halftime to talk about Michigan State's next move. And what a play by Skiles. Does it count? They're calling it on Skiles. Let's wait and see if they give him the basket. Well, that's three fouls on Skiles and three on Willis. Basket will count. So Skiles gets the hoop. Ten for him. 36-24 as you look at it again. But Skiles with three, Willis with three. Judd Heathcote searching the bench for help. And Richard Mudd is going to come in spraying knee and all. That move will meet with approval from the crowd. So fouls are a big problem for Michigan State, even though the Spartans lead by 12 with 3.45 to go. Don't forget if Michigan State wins, immediately following the final buzzer, we'll talk with Michigan State head coach Judd Heathcote. Here's Lamar Jackson, who's been injured much of this season. Into the game, number 31 out of Detroit Southwestern. Boy, this Southwestern High School in Detroit's turned out some players. He's another teammate of Keith Taylor. They only have two players from the state of Michigan. Taylor and Jackson, both from Detroit Southwestern. All the other players are from the state of Ohio. All right, Colin Irish, who was fouled after the shot, hits the first one, 36-25. 
Bowling Green now is perfect. Six out of six from the line. Four for Colin Irish. And it's 36 to 26. Michigan State with a 10-point lead in the basketball. Tremendous crowd here tonight. And the NIT is very impressed with the way Michigan State's fans have responded to this tournament. Mott around his man. Well, that's a soft one, but it's pulled down by Lamar Jackson, who just came in the game. An excellent rebounder. They've got Ford against Greer. Baseline jumper is all met by David Jenkins. Six for him, and now it's 36-28. He's got one of the best nicknames in collegiate basketball. They call him the Undertaker because of the number of ways he can bury an opposing team. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if that's the best name, but I love it. It's original. Michigan State turns it over for the seventh time. David Greer will lead the attack. Here's the Undertaker, but that one he didn't bury. And Richard Mudd pulls it out of there for Michigan State to Vincent. They're running. High feed to Mudd. No. Boy, the tempo of this game is so unlike normal college basketball. It's a shuttle hurdle relay at times. Up and down, up and down. I don't know about you, Jim, but I love that clock. Shot from way outside. As Jim says, no penetration by Bowling Green. And then a foul on Colin Irish, his second. You know, in the NBA, a lot of times you'll see him get down to two, one, and then some he'll fire. When they use this thing in the college game, this thing's flying up there 10 seconds after it hits 30. I don't think it's gone past 15 yet. <laughs> in other words, they could have a 15-second block. Seems to have altered their psyche. <laughs> All right, on the line now is Larry Pollock. He's got six points, played a good game here. I can't wait to rib Judd Heathcote sometime this spring about that technical foul. He was up the first time and got a technical foul. I mean, he was the most surprised guy in basketball tonight when that happened. Pollock misses. It's a very important 225 right now for Bowling Green as Michigan State, but they can cut this back to single digits, or if State gets a good spurt here, they could go up by 15. All right, now around the, actually it is a single digit right now at nine, but that's close anyway. It's a beautiful pass inside from Colin Irish to Lamar Jackson, and now it's 37-30. John Weinert says in 21 years of coaching that Colin Irish is the finest passing frontline player he's ever had, and there was a chalkboard example of it. I'll tell you, John Weinert's wife is here sitting behind her husband. I've never seen a more vociferous coach's wife. We met her before the game, delightful lady. And she is over there just yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. Out of bounds, fouls call against Michigan State. I believe Mudd got it. Both ball clubs right now offensively have abandoned their game plans. Uh, it, that's on Pollock. That's three on Larry Pollock now. They're running out of players. There you take a look at it. Mudd had that look like it was his, so now Derek Perry comes in and Pollock goes out. So Michigan State is in severe foul trouble right now, leading by just seven points as you look at John Weiner, the seven-year head coach at Bowling Green. He's had five straight winning seasons. Now that was a bang job off the glass by Jackson. He's coached in three different conferences during his collegiate career, and he's been named the coach of the year in each one of them. All right, now Bowling Green has cut it to five. They are nine for nine from the free throw line in the first half. Michigan State is three out of five, and it's 37-32, and the Spartans have foul problems. That clock has forced them to play a lot more wide open, and henceforth, they have got themselves in foul trouble. Minute 29 to go. You can't hold the ball. They've got to shoot it. Normally, they might hold it around a little bit, but the clock's at 11 seconds right now. Clock takes a lot of the offensive strategy out of the game. Boy, Mudd just got drilled from behind, and he may be hurt. He is at least fouled. He has that bad knee as they help him up. I think the foul is on Bowling Green's Colin. I, no, Lamar Jackson, his first. Nobody for Bowling Green as you look at that foul. Could have been a lot uh, worse injury. Mud just shaken up a little. No one for Bowling Green with as many as three fouls. The Spartans have Skiles, Pollock, and Willis all with three fouls. Richard is not a good free throw shooter. And now with a minute 14 to go, Bowling Green could cut it to three. And again, they can't hold it for the shot because that shot clock's at 24. Mentioned just a couple of minutes ago at 225 with the nine point lead. Beautiful play now it's inside. Cut down again. Colin Irish, six for him. And now it's 37 34. I love this clock. 
Now with 54 seconds to go, Michigan State will at least try to get a set playoff. <laughs> Neither ball club has gotten good penetration. They've been very content to go to the perimeter game. All right, Sam Vincent to Perry. The clock is at six seconds, five, four. They're yelling to shoot, three, two, one. He's not going one. to get it off. Nope, no, he did not get it off. Lack of verbal communication there between the bench and the Spartans. So that's the first time the clock has expired, and now with 25 seconds to go, Bowling Green can play for one shot and perhaps cut it to a one-point deficit. They take out Ken Waddell and put Keith Taylor back in the game. He's a shooter. Boy, Bowling Green was down 37-23. They've scored 11 points in a row. Almost any major college coach will tell you the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half are the most important time in any basketball game. Nine seconds to go in the half. Five, four, shot outside. Bounces around. No, they may call. Put back at the buzzer. It is it counted. Does, I believe. Yes, it counts. By Colin Irish. Eight for him. Bowling Green has scored 13 straight points to end the first half. And we have come to the end of the first half with our score. Michigan State 37, Bowling Green 36. We'll be back with first half statistics, some special guests. And the start of the second half after these messages, this is your Spartan Tournament Station. At Capital Federal, we're helping bring prosperity just around your corner. Our insured money market account gives you an interest in your community. Of course, you get money market returns with an account that's insured. But with Capital, your money stays here in the community, providing local home mortgages and consumer loans for you and your neighbors. The insured money market account from Capital Federal Savings. Cause a healthy local economy begins with you. Joe Wise, knock down that price. But Elvie, we can't sell this car for any less money. I'm the boss and I say knock down that price. We'll knock down the price. At Jack Dyson Ford, we've got Mid-Michigan's largest selection of used cars. Late model factory official cars, economy cars, luxury cars, and of course, our 99 cent cars. So if you're looking for good used car transportation, get rolling to South Logan and Jack Dykes for Ford. We deal, and that's no bull. Where are you going? To get a Stroh's. That's about a 200-mile hike through heavy snow. I know. If you think of it, get two. From one beer lover to another's throes. Take a good look at this card. No one should be without it because no health care plan can match it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Michigan works with hospitals and doctors to hold costs down, saving you money. The group coverage is flexible, including dental, vision, prescription drug, and major medical plans. This card is recognized everywhere. The benefits are solid. We do the work, you get the value. Tim Stout back with you at Jenison Fieldhouse. 37-36, the Spartans lead Bowling Green here at halftime. And with us live on the court is Michigan State's Athletic Director, Doug Weaver. Boy, are you going to be a busy man this weekend. Hockey is in the NCAA tournament. And I know you got to be pleased that the basketball team rallied in the last part of the season put these fans back in and reward them with a tournament. Boy, do they love this tournament, too. And this is a great atmosphere tonight, isn't it? It's a festive atmosphere. When you walked in here, we always have great crowds, but there's something different about the activity tonight. And as you mentioned, our fans are the best. They came out again. And if we give them a chance to come out Monday night, why, well, they'll sell it out, and I think, in a 48-hour period. Doug, were the NIT people surprised that you were able to sell this arena out as quickly as you did? Well, I think they were a little bit surprised. They, uh, they called early in the week and they were afraid we weren't selling tickets fast enough. Of course, you know, there's a little provincial attitude in New York. They don't know that much about the Midwest and they don't know that much about Michigan State. You were telling the media earlier in the week that the NIT contacts you way early in the fall, sends you a contract and says, hey, can we host it at your place if you have a good enough? Can you just sign the form, send it in, and then you're kind of like the people at large when they tell you you're on. 
you know, you just read in the paper, I guess, like everybody else, or close to that. I know. You can't be thin-skinned about such things, Tim. Once you've signed with the NIT, they make a lot of decisions for you. Although, I'll have to say this, it's a pretty quality outfit. They have a representative here today, Dan Quilty. And once they've selected you, they go to as many uh, links as they can to make sure it's a good atmosphere. I like the tournament. I like everything about it. I'm not cuckoo about the 30-second clock, but you love it, so if the fans like it, I guess that's what's important. Well, that's about the way it's been for us for a long time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Who didn't know that? Doug, Monday night now, you're going to get another home game if you win this one. That, that's correct. Fresno State comes out here after we win. You know, you can allowed to say if we win. And, uh, of course, in the event that the Spartans wouldn't win, Bowling Green would be going out to Fresno State. And to get this thing uh, two nights is good. We win uh, tonight, and be awfully hard when we'll have Spartans here Monday night. We might even get it again. So you could technically play three first-round games if you go that far. Purdue had three first-round or three opening-round games in its arena last year. Could happen. Uh, I think it'd be hard to do, but we could do it. We better worry about tonight, though. The Bowling Greens are playing awfully well, aren't you? I can see why they're number one in their league. They not only move the ball well, but they can really shoot. Doug, do you make some money off this tournament of any significance at all? Well, you know, I guess any money is significant. It's not. It's nothing like the NCAA tournament. Exposure is the biggest thing, Tim. We get great exposure for the people here and, of course, on television, on radio. If you get all the way to New York, you make some money. Of course, you split it with the Big Ten. Yeah. But uh, uh, money is not as much of a factor, although if, if you play enough, uh, these kind of arenas you'll make money. As you notice, some of the early games in the NCAA, they didn't play the very big crowds. One last yeah. question. Do you think that something like this with this fan support might lead to a new arena for Michigan State someday? Oh, I hope to. I'd like to have had the chance to sell 15,000 seats tonight. Wouldn't you like to spearhead the drive for the Doug Weaver Arena? Oh, no, you know I'm not crazy about that. We have enough great names to name it after. And, you know, if you give us $3 million, we'll name it after you. All right. I guess that's fair enough. All right. Doug, thank you very much. Have a good trip tomorrow to Boston. Thanks a lot, Tim. Good right. to be on with you. Doug Weaver, Michigan State's athletic director. We'll be back with another guest. Jay Mariotti of the Detroit News in a moment. 37-36 Michigan State over Bowling Green here at halftime. You're watching NIT Basketball on your Spartan Tournament Station. Whirlpool Dealer has a hard-to-beat special offer waiting for you right now. Come in and see the dealer's special offer and get the quality you want in this great lineup of Whirlpool appliances during this limited time only special event. Look for this special price tag. Throw off the store on selected quality Whirlpool appliances designed with the durability and long life performance you expect. Cash in on this Whirlpool dealer special offer before time runs out. Buy with confidence at Barker Fowler. Get two years parts and labor warranty free plus 90 days same as cash. Wishing you were fishing? Come to the Meyer Million Dollar Sporting Goods Sale. Are you meant for a tent? Come to the Meyer Million Dollar Sporting Goods Sale. Like to bike? Come to the Meyer Million Dollar Sporting Goods Sale. A million dollars worth of sporting goods, baseball, archery, exercising, golf, boating, and more from 20 to 50% off. See this week's Meyer One-Stop Shopping Guide. So if you're giving your all for basketball, come to the Million Dollar Sporting Goods Sale starting Monday at Meyer. Hi, I'm Tom Fox. Life is filled with so many moments to be shared and remembered. Moments when you tell someone very special that you really care about them. Diamonds, the gift of love, forever remembered. A diamond is forever. For the finest diamond engagement rings and other genuine diamond jewelry at surprisingly low prices, visit your nearest Fox jewelry store. We're direct diamond importers and members of the Diamond Council of America. Sagebrush, sagebrush, I'm going sagebrushing at my sagebrush store. Sagebrushing for clothes that fit my body to a T and prices that make me happy. I'm going sagebrushing, sagebrushing at my sagebrush store. Sagebrushing is fun and easy. You're gonna love it at Sagebrush in for the good times. Sagebrush. Back here at Jenison Fieldhouse, halftime, Michigan State over Bowling Green, 37-36. Jay Mariotti of the Detroit News, who is covering the NIT for the news, is with us. We've had some mixed uh, reaction to the 30-second clock so far. Doug Weaver doesn't like it. I love it. I know Jim doesn't like it, but you say you like it. No, I love it. I, I think those first 10 minutes are real exciting. I, I had a lot of fun, frankly, coming in. I, I really didn't know what I was going to see here. Bowling Green and Michigan State Bowling Green, kind of a, an unknown commodity to people up around here, except for the Central.
Michigan people, maybe the Eastern and the Western people. But but I'll tell you, that was some, some exciting ball, and I thought State was going to maybe run away with it until the guys got into foul trouble. And now we, we're going to have a great second half, 37-36. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Jim, what about the clock? I don't like the clock because there's only one temple, and uh, it's full speed. Uh, I like the changing strategy in collegiate basketball, and this is strictly a run-and-shoot game. And right now, I think both coaches are very upset with their players. Jay, uh, Michigan State could certainly do a lot to enhance its image if it would go a long way in the NIT. They may be fortunate to get into a tournament in the first place. They were 11-11 in midseason. Now, if they roll through with these home court advantage, who knows where they could go? I'll tell you what, you're right. And, and the way it looks now, I think the way where they're going to be playing, the state will be playing Fresno State here on Monday if they win. And I believe they're try the NIT is trying to set up a DePaul-Michigan State game for Chicago next Thursday or Friday. That'll be a heck of a game, and then, you know, who knows, but certainly it will do a lot to enhance a program that has declined quite a bit since the national championship. And uh, winning in NIT can do nothing but help, and I think, uh, I'm not going to say it's possible, but I'll tell you what, a trip to the Madison Square Garden isn't out of the uh, realm of possibility. Jim, there. Uh, Jay, give us one more comment here before we break for the final time. Could this, is a new arena mandatory to get them over the top, or can they get into tournaments like this with this arena? Well, Scott Skiles said it best. He, uh, he called this place an old barn. That's the way everybody knows it hasn't. I think Scott, he's the kind of kid who might be able to give this program the impetus to do something like that. He's got a lot of charisma. I'm not going to say that Scott Skiles is going to build the place himself, but if he and Sam and, and, and Willis and these guys can... If they can compile an excellent season next year, maybe, just maybe, something will finally happen here and they'll build a new place. But yes, I think you're right. I think a new arena is needed here or else it's going to be a mediocre Big Ten program for years to come. Okay, Jay, thanks for being with us. Very good. We'll be back with more halftime activity. 37-36 Spartans, this is your NIT tournament station. The people of Michigan. They haven't forgotten how to smile, and we're proud to be part of that smile. We're Delta Dental Plan, Michigan's largest group dental plan. But we didn't become the leader on size alone. Delta has always led the way in relating to people's needs. That's why our group plans are as individual as the people we serve. That's why these people are smiling all over Michigan. Delta, we're number one for a number of good reasons. Gilbert's is proud to announce the beginning of a new tradition. The Sunday breakfast buffet served every Sunday morning till 11 a.m. Treat your family to a tempting assortment of juices, freshly baked pastries, and fresh strawberries and cream. Then enjoy the omelet of the week, along with your choice from the buffet table of Canadian bacon, sausage, buttermilk pancakes, hot brandied apples, freshly made quiche, and more. Gilbert's Sunday breakfast buffet, Michigan's newest and finest tradition. presents the world's first rock video game, Journey Escape. The concert's over. Now you must help each member of Journey Escape through mobs of love-crazed groupies, shifty-eyed promoters, I can get you the floor. and no sneaky pitch, photographers. Please, said, no pitch, Find your roadies and manager. You've got ten minutes. And run for the escape vehicle. And live to rock another day. Journey Escape for the Atari 2600 from Data Age. They said I was crazy to leave my big company job and buy this boat yard. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. Things are going great. So here's to the man who looks deep inside and here's to the man who finds something extra. Pro signature is something extra. You have our name on that. Tim Stout and Jim Hornberger are back here at Sold Out Jenison Fieldhouse, 10,004. 37-36, Michigan State is leading. The Spartans came in tonight with a 16-12 record. They finished 9-9 in the Big Ten. The Falcons of Bowling Green, as you look at their band here, they brought about 800 fans, and then the Spartans sold out the rest of those tickets this afternoon. And, of course, the Michigan State band is here. And this was finals week, so many of the students have departed for home, but many have stayed, and what a game they have seen. Judd Heathcote in his seventh season at Michigan State. State back on the floor. 
his team. Uh, Jim, you said that you did not think the coaches were very pleased with their players at all. No, I don't because the game disintegrated so badly there and it was strictly a schoolyard basketball game exhibition for about the last 10 minutes. And when you get into that type of a game, that's how you get a Kevin Willis picking up three fouls and other Spartans picking up fouls. They're out of position defensively. They're going for a lot of errant balls. Uh, the team concept in this ball game in the last 10 minutes has been virtually abandoned. All right, you look at some of the crowd. There's John Weinert and his assistant. Weinert on the right, the head coach of Bullying, a very pleasant man. He brought his team in here yesterday. They worked out, stayed in town last night. Michigan State was leading in hockey at Harvard 3-2 early in the second period. So we're just about set to go here. Michigan State led 37-23 and then gave up the last 13 points in the first half. As I said, they have tremendous foul problems right now. Only three players have committed fouls, but those three players all have fouls. Will Scott Skiles and, Pat and uh, Larry Pollack. Bowling Green does not have anyone with three fouls yet, as you look at Skiles, who had a big first half for the Spartans. So we're just about set to go. Jim, what do you look for in the second half now? We had a lot of playing time for Patrick Ford. They took advantage of his speed. But the Spartans are going to have to maintain the tempo, control the ball as best they can. We only had one time where the clock expired, and that hurt Michigan State in the final minute. If they can keep Willis out of fall trouble, he is going to be, without a question, the dominant player, I believe, in this second half. He had eight rebounds in a little over 10 minutes playing time in the first half. He seemed to be really on top of his game in the first half. He was very active underneath. All right, Judd Heathco looks over there and gives us the high sign, says we'll get him. And as I said, if Judd wins this game, he will be... Now it's a 4-2 to two game. He wanted to get the uh, hockey score there because the crowd will erupt there and uh, I guess uh, interrupt our train of thought. At any rate, 37-36 uh, is our score. Let's check the, the starters as they come back out. Ford, Skiles, Tower, Vincent, and Willis for Michigan State. And Scott Skiles will stand right in front of us here at our table and inbound the ball on the alternate possession. That is one rule that is in force here in the NIT. Even with the limited playing time, Michigan State picked up 20 rebounds to only 15 for the Falcons. And when you're dominating the glass, you should be able to play with anyone. All right, Michigan State shot 51% in that half, 42% for Bowling Green. And uh, everything else was pretty close. Michigan State had 20 to, uh, rebounds to 15 for BG. So while it looked very misguided for uh, mis, uh, one sided for a while, it wasn't that way when it ended up. Willis misses. And so now the Falcons have a chance to take the lead. David Greer, number 10, will go down. Notice how sometimes these players will automatically stop at that three point circle, almost like it's a regular season game. Michigan State now has a new defensive wrinkle. They've got Vincent on Greer. Shot outside is no good by Bill Fain, and the Spartans pull it down with a chance to pad their one-point lead. Vincent looking for some help, and Towers there. 19-12 to go in the second half. Michigan State 37-36. At this juncture, Bowling Green has scored 13 straight points. Bowling Green has gone to a man to open the second half. That's way off by Vincent. You can see it from the angle. And again, the Falcons have a chance to take the lead. Inside they go, they dump it to Fain. Fain puts it up and in, and Bowling Green has the lead. Bill Fain, eight points for him, and now Bowling Green leads 38 to 37. Good look away pass by Irish. As Coach Weiner has said, Irish is the best passing front line man in 21 years of coaching basketball that he's had. Ford puts it up off the glass and down. Patrick Ford, eight points for him. Best I've seen him this season, 39-38. Shot down the other end of the floor. It won't go, and it's pulled out of there by Ben Tower. Skiles looking for a break here. And Skiles takes it in, and he may have been fouled as it go the other way. They're going to call a charge on Skiles, I that's believe, and that's going to be his fourth. He took the ball into traffic, had no place to go. So Michigan State has one of its top players, perhaps its top player, in trouble. Larry Pollock will come in, and Skiles will go off. He had an outstanding first half, too. He picked up 10 points in limited playing time and hit five out of seven from the floor. 
18.08 to go. Second half, Michigan State 39, Bowling Green 38. First round, NIT. State's in a 1-4 offensive alignment now. They really have only one pure guard on the floor, and that's Vincent. Shot way outside, will not go by Cole and Irish, and a whistle and a foul is called underneath. And that'll go against Fain, and now that is the third foul on Bill Fain, who's rebounded pretty well. This ball club does an outstanding job considering that they don't play anyone over six foot seven. They went 15 and three during the regular season in the Mid-American Conference and won the regular season title by three games. But Ohio upset them when Bowling Green shots would not fall last weekend. Tower outside. Bowling Green running, they have a chance to regain the lead. They trailed by as many as 14 points in the first half at 37-23. Keith Taylor on the move into the lane, dumps it off. Shot outside by David Jenkins is good, and Bowling Green has the lead. Eight points for David Jenkins, and it's 40-39 BG. 40-39. Jenkins is going to bury that shot all night when he gets that good luck at 15. Outstanding athlete, six foot five, a 200 pounder. Ford, top of the key, yes, Patrick Ford. Boy, what a game he's playing tonight, at least offensively, 41-40 Michigan State. He has a very quick release. Head fake, overcommit. Boy, I'll tell you, Pollock is lucky he didn't get a whistle there. Loose on the floor, and they'll jump it up, and that'll go back to Bowling Green. Looked like a hammer in there, but no call. So Bowling Green will get it back. 41-40 Michigan State, 16-47 to play in the second half from sold-out, jam-packed Jenison Fieldhouse. Larry must stay down defensively against Jenkins because he uses the pump fake extremely well. He wants to get that defender committed in the air. Now he'll get done wiping off the floor here and David Greer will inbound the basketball. Tremendous speed on the Bowling Green team. Inside, they Great got a man forward. wide open, and Willis rejects it with three fouls. He's yeah. walking. Great move by Kevin Willis. Six turnovers on Bowling Green. Fain has the tendency to do the bunny hop down there low. Boy, that was a gutty move by Willis with three fouls, too. He has to play defense, but he cannot get that fourth foul. Pollock says, why not? Larry Pollock, nine points, 43-40. Back down the other hand, and Pollock sends it in the crowd. Have you ever remembered a Judd Heathcote offense where players come down and say, what the heck, let's fire? And that's pretty much what it's been tonight for both clubs. The clock utilizes individual talent to a great deal. Inside they go, you see Willis trying to stay away from the foul. And that's four fouls on Larry Pollock now. And we still have 16.03 to go. And Ralph Walker, a freshman from Southfield with not very much playing time, will come in. Got to remember that uh, Richard Mudd has that sprained knee, and he's at the end of the bench. In fact, Jim, is he's not going to play again. His shoe is off. His ankle is in ice. Richard Mudd looks like he's done for the night. Bill Fain does a great job of maximizing his talent. He's very active down low. He posts up extremely well, utilizes his body. Nine points for Fain, 43-41, Michigan State. And Ralph Walker loses that first rebound. Lamar Jackson puts it up and in. Or Colin Irish, rather. That's Colin Irish for 10, and the game is tied at 43. Nice example of body control by Irish. Shot outside, no, tipped up, no, whistle, it's very physical inside now, and Ben Tower has it for Michigan State. That's his first. We're going to have timeout with 15 minutes, 46 seconds to go, our score, 43 all, Michigan State and Bowling Green. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. Wendy's new fish fillet sandwich is made from pure fillet of fish, so it's moist and flaky, like a fine fillet should be. Then lightly breaded with a seasoned cracker meal, so it's crispy and delicious. I used to eat the fish sandwich served at that other famous place, 
you know, the square fish. But I just keep wondering, uh, how do square fish swim? You want something better, you win these kind of people. If you care about your pictures, you'll flip over Kodak paper. There's only one paper to flip over, Kodak paper. So to help your pictures look their best, come where you see the Kodak paper sign. And you'll flip. Always ask for Lin prints. We'll return your prints in this clear plastic case. And if we don't return them when promised, the processing and the prints are yours for free. Always ask for Lin prints. Next day or free at all participating dealers. Back here at Jenison Fieldhouse, Tim Stout and Jim Hornberger, 15.46 to go. We are tied at 43. Both clubs back on the floor. That was a television timeout. DePaul beat Minnesota first round action, 76 to 73 on a Wednesday night. They say they may set up a DePaul-Michigan State game if possible later next week. South Carolina eliminated Old Dominion, 190, highest scoring game in the tournament as we give you some of these first round scores. Must overplay the outside there by Greer, and Sam didn't do it, but he was fortunate the ball didn't go in. And a foul is that a travel call, and it'll go back to Michigan State. Spartans were lucky that time. When you're playing defense against an outstanding offensive ball player, always overplay the outside and try to funnel him back toward the middle where you have some defensive help. Sam didn't do it there, but he was fortunate Greer didn't get the roll. All right, Michigan State's got an unusual lineup in there now with Walker in the game. And Patrick Ford is underneath, inside to Willis. He's got the foul, and I believe he's fouled that time. Now that time, Kevin did uh, get the break. And I believe that's on David Jenkins. Yeah, that's his first. That is the second team foul on Bowling Green in that Michigan State has three. Derek Perry in, Ralph Walker out. And for Bowling Green, the Falcons will send Keith Taylor out. And Lamar Jackson, number 31, is back in. Well played game, at least a very physical game and a lot of hustle. There have been mistakes, of course. But here's Kevin Willis on the line. He has four points tonight. They've done a great job on him, but fouls have been his biggest nemesis. That uh, rim must be like silly putty. I guess they call that a shooter's bounce, but first you've got to call Kevin a shooter from the free throw <laughs> line, and he's only shooting about 50%. And they go, and it's loose, and it comes away from Ben Tower, who thought he was fouled. But now Michigan stay with a one-point lead with 15 minutes to go. Inside move. Is it a charge or is it a block? Off has to be a charge. That is. Derek Perry stood his ground as you get the shot of Colin Irish. Three fouls on him, Jim. Coming now from the weak side, there's Irish. And Derek takes the full blunt of the blow. 15.04 to go in the second half. This crowd is on fire. Michigan State leading 44 to 43. Boy, I've heard it noisy in here for years, but tonight it's just a constant din. Set play for Vincent along the baseline. They're trying to get the ball into Willis. Good move. He's fouled, and it won't go. And that's four, that's four fouls on Bill Fain now. So now Bowling Green finally has a guy with foul problems. If Michigan State is patient offensively and gets some good ball movement, they should be able to get the ball into Willis in good working position almost every possession, but they've been very impatient offensively. All right, Willis on the line with five points. As you look at Mike Dean on the left, and here's a good shot of Kevin Willis, the junior. Jim said uh, he is not the best free thrower in America. And I don't think he's in second place. And boy, can he rebound. And can he block shots? So now Michigan State has a two-point lead, 45-43. It was 37-36 at halftime. Spartans led by 14 points at one time in the first half, and BG scored the last 13 and a half. Now it's tied back up as David Jenkins has 10 points. Boy, they got a lot of shooters on this team, Jim. Jenkins is a sweet ball player. He uses body fakes extremely well, gets the ball in a good shooting position every time he's the recipient. 45-45, Patrick Ford, you can see the knee brace on his left knee. Tower is going to put it up. He looked for Willis, couldn't get it. Willis cannot go that hard for it, and Michigan State gets a break. They're packing it in right now with Skiles out of the ball game, and Michigan State's perimeter shooter, their best one, 
so they are a little suspect right now from the outside. Fresno State plays the winner of this game Monday night. If it's Michigan State, the game's at Jenison Fieldhouse. If it's Bowling Green, the game's at Fresno. Perry puts it up and in, and they will not give him the bucket. Offensive foul is called on Derek Perry. Well, I tell you, Jim, I've never seen Judd as uncharacteristic as he is tonight. He has not been off that bench hardly at all. Uh, Derek uh, looked like a horse coming out of sand on this one. He traveled, but they didn't call it, and then he picked up the ball on the charge. 13.56 to go. Bowling Green with a chance to take the lead. Both ball clubs are much more patient offensively. They're running their offenses now. Here's Greer. Working with an elbow around, said beautiful pass inside to Lamar Jackson. Great assist, six points for Lamar Jackson, and Bowling Green has the lead again. There's a textbook example of throwing a pass as a man is getting open rather than after he's already open, so the defender has no time to react. Now Bowling Green with a chance to go up by four. Well, Michigan State is all at once tonight, and this team from the Mid-American Conference. Around they go, a blocking foul is called on Ben Tower. And for Ben, that'll be his second foul. You can see he got around him on a baseline here. And then he's using his body there. They must shuffle the feet and overplay Jenkins to the outside. You don't have any help from the outside. You do if you can funnel him toward the lane. All right, ball is kicked out of bounds, and it goes back to Bowling Green. I think. One official definitely says Bowling Green. <laughs> Just, he'll make a little comment, but that's about all. All right, Bowling Green now inbounds the basketball. John Weiner, who's usually very vociferous, has not been off the bench all night, not even to talk to his players. He's been seated on that bench. His wife's been up quite a bit, but he hasn't. Shot from the top of the key is all net by David Jenkins. What a shooter. 12 points for the first team Mid-American Conference player, and it's 49-45. And you laugh because they call him the Undertaker. Derek Perry tipped up and in by Kevin Willis. Eight points for Willis, 49 to 47. Bowling Green by two. No defensive seal there on Willis. Very good active move. His best strength is that he's very quick off the basketball floor and can run the full 94 feet. Boy, this team has tremendous speed, and now they call a foul on Sam Vincent. That'll be his first one. Now Judd's up and yelling this time hard. That'll be Sam Vincent's first foul tonight. Michigan State with 16 fouls, four for Bowling Green. Looks like a good takeaway there by Vincent. He was third in the Big Ten this year in steals. He led the Spartans with 43. And to show you what a complete ball player Jenkins is for Bowling Green, he had 60 as a defensive frontliner. Now the Falcons who move the ball so well offensively put it up and it's down by Keith Taylor. Six for him at Bowling Green leads 51 to 47. Judd has a decision on how long he's going to keep Skiles on the bench. You know, though, Jim, it's a tough game for Skiles. Ford fires and score. Boy, this is his Detroit Public School League type of game. That's 12 for Ford. Boy, look at this game. <laughs> he's not quick. Tower on the steal. Ahead to Sam, but Greer's just as fast, and he fouled him. And it will not go. I don't think it would have counted anyway. It would have counted. The official had his arm in the air for the violation. He was ready to signal that it was going to count. Good lead pass by Ben Tower. Sam keeping the ball out in front. Could have done a little bit better job there of utilizing his body. He let Greer sneak in from the blind side. All right, Sam Vincent. He only has six points tonight. If he hits them both, the game would be tied once again. What a game this has been. Seven points for Sam Vincent, 51 to 50 now. Vincent came in tonight, averaging 16.8 on the season. Michigan State's leading score. This could tie the game. And we have a timeout on the floor. 11 minutes and 32 seconds remaining to be played. 51, 51, Michigan State Bowling Green. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. 
Jack Dykes Ford has red hot deals right now on 1983 cars and trucks. Hi, I'm Allie Wilkie, and we're smashing the prices on all 83 Ford trucks, like this beautiful Ford Bronco. Hit it, Brutus! And the deals are exploding on new cars, Escorts, 40 XPs, and Mustangs. The prices are low, and we make the terms right for you. And that ain't no bull, so get rolling to South Logan and Jack Dykes to Ford. When I quit the airline to buy this charter service, they said, you're nuts. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. I'm doing fine. So here's to the man who looks deep inside and here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh Signature is something extra. You have our name on that. Tim Stahl with Jim Hornberger back here at Jenison Fieldhouse. 51 all, 11.32 to go. Well, regardless of this NIT action, next Saturday, Jim and I will be back in Ann Arbor at Chrysler Arena for the Michigan Boys State High School Championships. All four games for you. What a great day it is. Class B at 11 o'clock, A at 2.30, a DC doubleheader at 7 o'clock. And we have a high school upset final in. Lansing Everett has won its regional at Kalamazoo tonight, downing Benton Harbor 78-75. All right, now let's see how these teams adjust now. Inside they go, and it, it will not go. It's on the rim, and we'll have a jump ball, and it will go to Michigan State on the alternate possession. That was almost goaltending either way, but of course it did not fall in. So more likely it would have been on Michigan State. Now Lamar Jackson's into the ball game from Detroit Southwestern. He goes 6'8", 225. He's a muscle-up ball player, and Kevin is going to have to do a much better job of fronting him and prohibiting that good entry pass. Forward high feet of Kevin Willis, and they slam it down. This Michigan State is patient offensively. They can get the ball into Willis, and he can score a lot of points in the last 10 minutes and 50 seconds. You know, Jim, in a game with this speed, I'm not sure Skiles is going to get back in the game because Ford's got the speed to stay with us, Bowling Green Club. Ford's done a great job. Shot up, no whistle first, and a foul is called on Derek Perry. That'll be his second. John Heathcote will walk to midcourt and discuss this one. Colin yep. Irish does an excellent job of maneuvering with the basketball, considering that he's had two major knee operations on his left knee. He is very adept at passing the basketball off the dribble. Boy, what a game Patrick Ford has played here tonight. He has 12 points and a tremendous high feed in there to Kevin Willis. Now, they're not calling that a shooting violation. They're calling it a common foul. Cole and Irish miss it. They're on the rim. Put back up, and it will fall in. Wait a minute, a whistle. It's on Jackson. There's going to be a foul. Boy, there's a big break for Michigan State. John Weinert, you saw him with his head in the hands. No basket at all. Cole and Irish missed that free throw. And Lamar Jackson has his second foul. At the end of two periods in hockey, Michigan State four, Harvard three. You look at the coaching staffs for each of these teams. What an intense game it has been. This is postseason college basketball. State's coming down now with a set play. Bowling Green, they're looking for the high lob. Oh. Vincent fall away, 12-footer. That's got Judd up. He's saying why. Bowling Green with a chance to tie it again. Keith Taylor gives it off, now he gets it back. Taylor puts it up, boom, Keith Taylor. Boy, can he fire, eight points for Taylor. 53 all, 10.09 to go. Back down the floor. Tower to Ford. Tower, baseline, yes, Benton Tower. Six points for Tower, 55-53 Spartans. Bowling Green right now is conceding the 15-foot jump shot with Skiles on the pine. 9.50 to go. Turnaround jump shot outside, won't go. They go in for it. Beautiful. I thought there was a travel there, no call. And then Tower just hacks it. I'll oh. tell you, nobody can ever accuse <laughs> Colin <laughs> Irish of having tunnel vision. Tower is and when Tower fouls you, he does foul you. There's... Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't think we have much doubt on Allen. Spartan. All right, Larry Pollock comes in. Perry goes out. Pollock has four fouls. Scott Skiles has been on the bench almost this entire second half, and that's only because Patrick Ford's done a great job. 
Yeah, this is what I would call an blue collar front line. They're 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, they pick up all the loose scraps around the boards. They're working hard all the time out there. They play very cohesive. Lamar Jackson with eight points, ties the game at 55. This is a quick man's game right now. And of course, if Skiles has a weakness, it's speed. And that's why he is out, because Ford is able to stay with the Falcons a little longer because he's a quicker player. Here's Ford. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a Detroit Public School League, and it's best for him tonight. 14 points for Ford. Down they go the other end. Pollock on the glass at Michigan State with a two-point lead in the ball. Good intimidation there by Willis. Irish went in and State wants a tee. Oh, and Patrick was ready to fire too. <laughs> Time out of the floor, 9.05 to go. Michigan State 57, Bowling Green 55. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. The art of getting rich is learning how to get the most out of the money you already have. For instance, if your checking account isn't earning interest, it should be. With a NOW account at Capital Federal, you'll earn interest on the money that's just sitting in your checking account. And with a low $100 minimum balance, our NOW account will help you get the most out of the money you already have. The NOW account at Capital Federal Savings. Something better for your checking. A quarter of a century ago, Delta Dental Plant of Michigan was just about the only group dental plant in Michigan. Then other plans came along, trying to match Delta in fitting a group's individual needs. But a curious thing happened. The more new plans there were, the more Delta grew. So that today, Delta isn't just Michigan's number one dental plan. For a lot of people, it's still the only dental plan. Tim Stahl with Jim Hornberger at Jenison Field House. We have some more regional finals in a battle of unbeatens tonight. Class C, Onstead has defeated Williamston 54 to 45, and in Class D, Concord has knocked out Fowler 70 to 58. Everett beat Benton Harbor for the Class A regional title in Kalamazoo 78 to 75. Stay tuned for TV 10 Action News at 11 o'clock tonight. Mark Wilson will have all the highlights and scores of all the basketball and hockey tonight for you on award-winning TV 10 Action News at 11. Now with 8.55 to go, the Spartans have the ball and a two-point lead. Remember, the clock will go off at the four-minute mark. Pollock throws it, gets a lot of air on that one. Now comes David Greer, the all-time assist leader of the Mid-American Conference. Jenkins fires, no, and it comes off to Patrick Ford. Ford has made six straight shots en route to his 14, and now he has a turnover to go with it, and Pollock is out of the game. That's five fouls on Larry Pollock. He'll go out with nine points. Two very bad plays in judgment there by Patrick Ford. One on the outlet pass. Very lackadaisical. And then Pollock falling Irish 75 feet away from the basket. And he's going to be having the one and one opportunity. All right, now Bowling Green makes some more changes. They're going to bring 43 Paul Abendroth back into the game, and they send Lamar Jackson out. Boy, this Bowling Green team, Jim, man for man, may be the quickest team I've seen all year. I thought Illinois was fast as Colin Irish hits it. 11 points for him, and I think Bowling Green man for man is probably a little quicker. Irish, as Jim says, gets the shooter's bounce, and we're tied at 57 with 8.34 to go. Ford's done a very expertise job at the point. Ford is seven for seven. 16 points for Patrick Ford. That is his career high. His career high was 12, and he has 16. He's had a tremendous game. Inside they go, Ford underneath, and I think he Ball followed line. Patrick Ford is Taylor dusted him to the left. That's a first foul on Patrick. Abendroth goes out, and Lamar Jackson comes in. Boy, this John Weiner team is well coached, Jim. Take a look inside as Patrick First Ford. thing you play defense with is your feet, and there Patrick crossed over. That's an absolute no-no defensively. 8-10 to go, Michigan State by two. On the line, Keith Taylor has not been to the line yet tonight. Boy, this team just buries free throws. They have only missed two free throws tonight, and they have made 14. They are 14 of 16. 59-58, Michigan State by one. We are tied. 
is going to be a wild finish. 59 all. 8.06 to go. Ford is the man outside. He's hit seven straight. Here's Ben Tower. Willis with three fouls. Out of bounds. Back to Bowling Green. So the Falcons now have a chance to take the lead. Judd Heathcote spoke with Ben Tower there and not with the official. Well, if that one went off of Michigan State, we had 10,000 people that saw it the wrong way. <laughs> Here's David Greer. They clear the lane, but Sam Vincent covers up. Boy, this guy, I'd hate to chase this guy all night. Turnaround jump shot, won't go. You can see him battling for the boards, and Vincent comes out of there with seven and a half minutes to play in the game. Sam penetrates, kicks it to Ford, going for eight straight, won't go. Willis pounds it down. 12 points for Kevin Willis, and it's 61 to 59. They didn't get a defensive seal on Willis, and he has that outstanding quick jumping ability off the floor. Boy, that always brings the crowd alive. And this, you couldn't ask for more noise than what we have in Jenison right now. His teammates call him Jake the Snake for the way he operates in there, and that good example. Boy, the Falcons moving around, fire outside. No one, Ford clears the board. To foul back here. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This won't count. And the foul will go. Let's tell you that. Uh, that's on Bowling Green. I thought it was. Taylor has a second, third foul on Taylor. And so that'll send Patrick Ford to the line. Well, I'll tell you, if he gets a vote on that shot clock, Jim, I think he may be voting affirmatively. Well, he's going to love the NIT if he can keep playing in it. Ford is on cue tonight. 62 to 59. 17 points for Patrick Ford. Now Kaywood comes in for Ben Tower. Remember, Scott Skiles has barely played tonight. The pace of the game has been quick for him, and he's had foul trouble, and Ford has been on fire. 62 to 59. The clock will go off at the four-minute mark. Whistle foul is called on Kaywood. That'll obviously be his first. Bill is the senior co-captain out of East Lansing. Again, Michigan State is not overplaying baseline position, and that's your basic rule defensively, always overplay the baseline. You have no help there whatsoever, and All right, Jenkins David. is very adept with the body fakes, shoots off the dribble well, fine all-round athlete. He's Thir only a junior. 13 points for David Jenkins. 16 of 18 for Bowling Green, 17 of 19 for the Falcons who stayed in the game on their free throwing. And it's 62-61 Michigan State with six minutes and 50 seconds to go in the second half. Great first round NIT game. Happy to bring it to you. We'll follow the Spartans throughout the NIT tournament. The shot clock is at 11 now. 10, 9, 8, 7. Vincent dumps it to Ford. Ford lets it go. No. Kaywood can't get the tip, and then he may have fouled. Oh, did he get a break there? Boy, Bill Kaywood really got a break there. Now John Weiner gets up for the first time tonight. That one goes against Jenkins, his second. But you get those kind of, as you would call, breaks when you're aggressive, and that's how Bill was. He came in from the weak side looking for the putback shot and picked up the foul, and he has a chance now to pick up some very valuable points. Now, Kaywood has had trouble at times shooting free throws. He is 70%. A shooter, but he really needs to bury him here with his team at a one-point lead. Kaywood is in more to play forward than guard, and that's why Skiles is not in, too. As I say, he has trouble making some of those big free throws, and he misses that one, so now Bowling Green can take the lead. Greer says, I'll let it go, and I'll bury it. David Greer, that's 10 for him, and the Bowling Green leads at 63 to 62. And the Falcon fans, 800 stronger alive. And Judd Heathcote, I think, wants a timeout, but he's not going to get it. Now he calls it off. Vincent puts it up, no, and a foul is called Jackson. against uh, Lamar Jackson. That's his third. Kaywood goes out. Ben Tower comes back in. David Greer is as fine a watch charm point guard you're going to find anywhere in the Midwest. When they said in the 
press guy that they felt he was good as any point guard in the Midwest, he very likely could be. He is one super player from Kent McKinley High School. So here's Sam Vincent. They've held him down tonight. How would you have liked to have played uh, Kent and McKinley and have him go into a stall with Greer, Stokes, and Taylor? I'd forfeit. Oh, it wouldn't be worth it. run your Reagan. <laughs> So Vincent puts Michigan State on top. Sam's been hot at the line, six of seven, he has 10 points. Michigan State with a one point lead and 5.55 to go in a game. Boys, it's been a hard played game. Falcons are so well organized, well coached team. Inside they go, that's gotta be a charge, and it is. That one goes against David Jenkins, his third. Excellent defense that time by Michigan State. I don't know if Weinert's upset with a call or his player. I suspect it's the official, but I don't know what he's arguing on that time. 10 no. turnovers on Bowling Green now. There was a very good example of help out defense because Tower had been beaten down bloody nose lane and then Perry established his position and got the charge. Now remember, if Bowling Green has the lead, they could stall, as you said, with Greer without that shot clock, because the clock only will go for another minute and 23 seconds. And then Willis loses the ball out of bounds, and Judd Heathcote stomps up and down in dismay over that, because Bowling Green again can take the lead. Now John Weinert will talk with the officials here at midcourt. Edgar Wilson will go over and check what this is all about. I don't know what this is about. They called the foul on the wrong Bowling Green player. Or at least uh, that's what uh, Weinert's arguing. Correction on the last foul. Okay, Judd agrees. Well, that's his. Uh, whatever. Here we go, 5.19 to go, 64-63, Michigan State with a one-point lead at Bowling Green. Look at this little David Greer. Jim calls him that tough little guard. He's a watch charm guard. Sam's been guarding him. In they go. You can see the speed on this team. Greer fakes out Sam, dives into him, and Sam gets the foul. For Vincent, that is his second. Boy, that fake really takes the Spartans into the sky. Bowling Green has two excellent players with built-in body fakes. You don't just acquire these moves overnight. This takes a long time of hard practice All right, to be Greer. able to pump fake like that that Greer and Jenkins can do. Greer has not missed tonight, and he now has five in a row. He has 11 points in the game, and we're tied at 64. 4.58 to go. Look at those assists that he has had this year. This guy is just automatic. This team has made 19 of 21 at the free throw line tonight and leads Michigan State by a point with 4.54 to go. So the clock will cycle two more times. Tower, why did he shoot that? I don't know. Willis can't quite get it, but Tower puts it back. Under to Willis and he'll stuff it. Right at that basket to Kevin Willis for two reasons. One, he kept the basketball alive and then he scored it. Now Skiles is gonna come in because the clock is gonna go off and he can run the delay and shoot the free throws if they need him. Greer outside and it's tipped up and in beautifully by Lamar Jackson of Bowling Green, 10 for him and with 4.22 to go, the Falcons have the lead once again. Jackson broke the defensive seal. They want timeout and now they will get it, timeout. With 4.15 to play from Jenison Fieldhouse, Bowling Green 67, Michigan State 66. You are watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. Stable, dependable, predictable. That's Farm Bureau Insurance Group. Keeping our promises, keeping your trust, for you, for your family, for your home, car, farm, business, for your retirement, Farm Bureau Insurance Group makes your future a little more predictable. Know what? Now Wendy's is making bacon. No faking. 
bacon? Wendy's is making bacon. Introducing Wendy's Bacon Cheeseburger. Crisp, lean strips of bacon on top of a Wendy's cheeseburger to become Wendy's new hot and juicy bacon cheeseburger. We're taken with bacon. So come try Wendy's new bacon cheeseburger. We're making bacon for Wendy's kind of people. Tim Stahl with Jim Hornberger back here at Olymp. Jenison Fieldhouse, 4.15 to go. The clock has now been shut off. Stay tuned for Gavilan following the game here on TV 10. And then TV 10 Action News at 11 o'clock. Kathy Schmaltz, Glenn Ray, Mark Wilson, and Ed Ring will have all the news, the best in mid-Michigan tonight, coming up on TV 10. All right, now Skiles is back in the game. He hasn't played very much. His speed, as we said, has been a problem. But now the clock is off. He can handle the ball, he's good at it, but Michigan State trails by a point. So now they can run whatever normal offense they would run. The clock is no longer a factor, at least uh, the 30-second clock. Bowling Green is packed in the 2-3. As Ford's, yeah, Ford's in the game, 44 with the ball. They're moving up on Skiles, though, at the point position when he receives the basketball. And they're looking for Willis and for a good rip, but Willis is absolutely surrounded. In that zone, he is just surrounded. Skiles dumps it to Sam. Vincent, 18 footer. Yes, Sam Vincent. Good patience, Jim. And Michigan State has the lead. Now we'll see how Bowling Green's offense adjusts without that clock. Will they stand around or keep moving it? Three seventeen to go. Michigan State with a one point lead. They're working on Skiles if they can. Scott has the four fouls, of course. They clear out a side. Baseline jumper, yes. All met by Keith Taylor. 12 points for him and a timeout Bowling Green with three minutes to play. The Falcons lead at Bowling Green 69, Michigan State 68. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. Don't miss Vanderbilt's annual Blemish and Warehouse Sale, Friday and Saturday, March 25th and 26th at the Marshall Street Armory. Save up to 70% on over 5,000 pairs of Adidas shoes. Save 50 to 70% on slightly irregular rain suits, warm-ups, jackets, and other clothing. Plus basketballs, footballs, soccer balls, and volleyballs, all more than 50% off the regular price. And just in time for spring, softball and baseball clothing, plus balls, bats, and gloves. All this and more during Vanderbilt's annual Blemish and Warehouse Sale, Friday and Saturday, March 25th and 26th at the Marshall Street Armory, open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Q106 rocks. No one has to tell you who rocks Michigan. Q106, it rocks you. All right, back at Jenison Fieldhouse, 2.52 to go. Bowling Green leads by a point. Michigan State with the ball. No more 30-second clock. It's been turned off. That's the NIT rule in the last four minutes. Skiles nearly loses it. Tower nearly loses it. This is going to be a gut check for both these clubs right now, and Willis will go out to the high post. Michi Michigan State has been much more patient offensively when Skiles comes back into the ball game. Skiles is going to put it up off balance and not no. And the Falcons with a one-point lead have the ball. They got very good ball movement there. They got a good percentage shot, but it didn't drop. They've got to play the tough defense right now. Defense is the great leveler, and right now Michigan State has to play some outstanding team defense. Bill Fain, 25, is in the game, and Skiles is gone. That's his fifth foul. This was not Scott Skiles' night, and he fouls out of there with 10 points all in the first half. So Skiles is gone. Don't understand that move by Scott at all. Uh, that certainly was not what we've been accustomed to, good heady basketball by Scott. Fouling Taylor. 40 feet away from the basket, reaching around him. All right, 2.04 to play. On the line will be Keith Taylor. Judd Heathcote has a minute to put someone in, and he's going to pull, I believe, Tim Gore into the game. So Gore's got a big job to do. He comes in cold, a 6'4 junior from Erie, Pennsylvania. Michigan State's got a lot of speed in there now. Taylor is a 
percent shooter. Free throw is up and perfect. Boy, this team is some ball club. I'll tell you, the night they lost to Ohio, they lost to one heck of a club. I don't know how they did it. Well, as we said in the pregame, there's no question about it. They are the class of the Mid-American Conference. Well, they finally miss a free throw, and Michigan State with a chance to tie the game with two minutes remaining to be played. And Michigan State wants a timeout. So we will hold it right here. 70 to 68, Bowling Green with, with a lead, 156 to go. Let's remind you of these high school scores tonight. Derek Perry's gonna check them in when we start again. Concord won its regional tonight. Downing Fowler, 70 to 58. In a battle of class C unbeatens, Onstead ended Williamson's season, 54 to 45. Everett upset Benton Harbor, 78 to 75. And in the third period in the hockey game, Michigan State was leading Harvard four to three. Well, TV 10, as we say, is your sports station, and not just for basketball. The Tigers are coming up this season. They play the Houston Astros on TV 10 Sunday at a 1.30 p.m. Your first look at the Tigers this season. They were rained out of last night's game of the Cardinals on TV 10, so we'll have them for you again this Sunday at 1.30. As you look at Judd Heathcote, who's earning his pay tonight, Spartans were a seven-point favorite. They say they had a problem practicing this week with all those final exams. But they uh, caught all they won in this game tonight. That 30-second clock certainly gave you a new look at college basketball. It is now history for this game. And by the way, if there is an overtime, there is no 30-second clock. No three-point basket. Skiles is fouled out with 10. Pollock is fouled out with 9. And Willis is playing with three fouls. He got them all in the first half. Michigan State has the ball with a chance to tie it up. Coach John Weiner right now was alerting his team to a possible high feed situation. Michigan State loves to run it. Tower puts it up. Yes, Ben Tower. Boy, is that a big hoop for Ben. And the gentleman has eight points. We are tied at 70 with a minute 42 to go in the game. Now will Bowling Green try to run the clock? You've got a lot of speed on the floor right now, and as Jim says, speed kills. Which team will get killed by it? Minute 27 to play, the game is tied. Each team with plenty of timeouts, I believe they each have two left. 70-70, Michigan State led 37-23. In the first half, Bowling Green got 13 straight points before the half, and it's been a dogfight ever since. We're down to a minute and seven seconds to go. They're in their spread offense right now. They're looking for the back door for a defensive man to turn his head and then have to pay the penalty. 54 seconds remaining to be played. John Weiner now on one knee, but I have not seen him make a motion. This must have been set up on the timeout. They may call timeout here at another 20 seconds and set up a last shot. Bill Fain has come back into the ball game for Bowling Green. All right, 38 seconds to go. Michigan State's coaches are up talking with their team. Can't foul anybody now. 33 seconds to go. Remember, Bowling Green makes almost all of its free throws. Bowling right now is playing a pretty passive defense. They're going oh, to they call five finally. seconds. They call five seconds, and Michigan State will have the ball with 26 seconds to play, and the Spartans will call timeout and set up a final shot. John Weiner does not like the call, but Jim, you pointed it out correctly. Ben Tower got in the flow out there at midcourt. He was able to suspend the play. They could not move the ball within five seconds. And without that clock, it changed the tempo of the game a little bit. And now Michigan State has a chance to win the game. Boy, what a ball game this has been, too. <laughs> I don't think I've ever enjoyed a game more from the standpoint of two super teams, the way they play tonight. I think the second half has been played exceptionally well oh, by tremendous. both ball clubs. The crowd has been Unbelievable. energized into this game right from the opening tip. Well, one reason the crowd's been in it is because of the Bowling Green crowd. Bowling Green has a band here. It's a bigger band than Michigan State's. They've got 800 loud fans orange clad. And of course, Michigan State's fans are, I've always said they're the greatest in the world. They came into this old arena. Let's see if we can hear Judd Heathcote here. I don't know if we can. No, we cannot. They bought those $8 tickets. They jammed Jettison Fieldhouse. And they'll be home Monday night if they win against Fresno State. Now, offensively, the Spartans 
first of all, do not want to turn over the basketball or take a shot if they can with any more than six seconds left. They like to take a shot with about six seconds left on the clock. So if they miss, they have the opportunity for the putback shot. All right, here we go. 26 seconds remaining to be played in the game. We're tied at 70. The crowd is on its feet now. 70 to 70. 22 seconds to go. Vincent outside, and it's stolen away, I think, and then Sam is called for a foul. With 17 seconds to go, Michigan State got confused in its offense, and Vincent commits a foul after having it stolen away. So the Falcons have new life. However, Michigan State, of course, even if Bowling Green scores, will have plenty of time to come back down the floor. Now, Keith Taylor is on the line. He is three out of four from the line tonight. He will shoot one and one. Sophomore out of Detroit Southwestern. Tool is a cucumber, Taylor buries it. 14 points for Taylor, and now Bowling Green has a one point lead with 17 seconds to go. And this one is missed. So here's the ball game right now, and Michigan State wants timeout with 14 seconds to go. 14 seconds to go. Bowling Green leads at 71 to 70. And now the Spartans will probably either win it or lose it right here. Well, I don't know what happened, Jim, and when they set this thing up, Sam, I think, was looking for a call from the bench. And the alert Bowling Green guard stole it away. Ford and the alignment was supposed to be back farther toward midcourt, and he was down in the corner and Sam was motioning for Ford to come back. They wanted to run that little spread offense to the delay game and then get their offense into gear with about eight or nine seconds to go. He momentarily took his eyes off the defender, Taylor, and Taylor came up with the errant pass. Without the pass, he stripped it from him. All right, Jim, now let's talk strategy. If you get it into Kevin Willis, that's fine, but if he's fouled, he is not a good free throw shooter. If you shoot it outside, you could miss. My guess is they'll try to shoot it from the outside. And if they miss, maybe Willis can get a tip. I don't think they want Willis, Willis shooting free throws here at the end of the game. If they're going to have anybody shoot free throws, they want it to be a perimeter player. Now, you would guess it'd be a guard that would shoot it. I don't think they're going to try to go inside unless it's an e uh, unless they high feed him. But again, if you tackle a guy, then he'd have to make two. be interesting to see. Willis is at the low post, though. Bowling Green has played much better defense the second half. They've been alternating between a 1-2-2 two, two, and a 2-3 zone. They've been packing it in and conceding the 15-foot jump shot to the Spartans. Here we go, 13, 12, 11, 10. Trying to swing the ball around to Vincent in the corner. They Eight. overplayed him. Willis, they do get to Willis. Yes, Kevin Willis with five seconds to play and Bowling Green calls timeout. That was the strategy, Willis. That's his best move. He's as good as anybody, but now Bowling Green will have a chance to win it. Willis hit the turnaround. I don't know if he'll see it again, but he'll hit a, never hit a bigger basket than that. All right, take a look again, Jim. Call the play. All right, they were looking for Vincent. You can see him coming along the baseline. He's in the corner. Good entry pass there to Willis. He did not put the ball on the hardwood, kept it up high, and got the big deuce. Great job by Fane. He had his hands up as high as he could go. He might have almost been better off fouling him, but he didn't. Fane, of course, has four fouls. So with five seconds to go, Bowling Green is going to have to go the length of the floor. Now, Michigan State's been notorious in the past for not pressuring the basketball and getting beat that way. I hope they pressure the basketball because this team is so quick and with so many good shooters, if they get one off, that could be it. They have a big decision defensively. Are they going to use full court pressure the entire 94 feet? Are they going to pick them up at the 75 foot mark or are they going to wait till the basketball is possibly even at midcourt? They're going to come out, it looks like, yeah. full court pressure all 94 feet. They want Willis back. Five seconds to go, I like this move. They're gonna pressure the ball and force him to get something off balance. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. It'll count if it goes. It is no good! Michigan State wins it! The Spartans have beat Bowling Green! And they go to the second round with a great win tonight! What a basketball game we have had tonight! We'll be back with Judd Heathcote and a post-game wrap-up after the, in the statistics. Final 72-71 Michigan State. You're watching TV 10, your Spartan tournament station.
Introducing Jack Dykstra Forge Thunderbird Calvary. Leading the roundup of new 83 Forge are, of course, the economical Ford Escort. Riding shotgun are the rough and tough 83 Ford Rangers. Next, we have a beautiful herd of Mustangs, followed by our leader, Chief Thunderbird, with beautiful aerodynamic designs, high mileage, and a luxurious ride. Get rolling to South Logan and test drive the 83 Fords at Jack Dykstra Ford, where you get the best deal in town, and that's no bull. John, that was a great win for you, 72 to 71. What did you try to do there in the last seconds with that shot? Well, we're trying to get the ball into Kevin or kick it off to Sam, and you know, we just got the shot, and that's what, it was you know, it really hurt having two players, three players in foul trouble, but give the kids credit, give Bowling Green credit, they played a great game. 30 second clock really had an impact, didn't it? Well, I think it does, it makes you play a little different. Judd, one other one, Patrick Ford, he saved you tonight too, Well, didn't Patrick you? played very, very well. Okay. I gotta go, Tim, Very yeah. good, congratulations. Okay. All right, what a wild game it was, Michigan State to win at 72 to 71. I lost my earpiece in that melee there. Spartans win it, what a super finish there, Jim, no question about it. Michigan State made the, the right moves down at the end. And we're going to come back and wrap this up in just a moment. Michigan State wins at 72 to 71. You're watching on TV 10, your Spartan tournament station. A beautiful volunteer. Hold my crush, but don't drink it. Crushes all natural flavors. Don't drink it. Make it impossible to resist. We're so Best irresistible, you can't it's keep a bottle. Are you drinking it? Orange lovers have a crush on us. Classic Business Products introduces the all-new Sharp 750M plain paper copier. You can easily produce your own business forms, brochures, mailing labels on any paper, matching printer's quality at a fraction of the cost. At $23.95, this machine is a remarkable value. But now, only while they last, Classic Business Products offers you the 750M for the incredibly low price of $12.98. Call 372-5423 today. At $12.98, they'll disappear. We're Classic Business Products. Red Wing Work Oxfords are tough as nails and made for working on concrete. They feel the best because this cushioned wedge sole soaks up the shock of every step. And we've got your size. Tough as nails Red Wings for work or sport in two locations to serve you better. Waverly Plaza Lansing and on Cedar and Holt. Hard working, long lasting Red Wings. 72 to 71, Michigan State wins it over Bowling Green tonight. What a wild finish to that game. Great win for the Spartans, Jim. What a tough, uh, they just announced Patrick Ford 17 points. What a tough loss for Bowling Green to play that well. It was a very tough loss for them, obviously, but uh, it was a great example of collegiate basketball at its best, and I think the whole town now has NIT fever. You know, it'll be interesting now to see how Michigan State adjusts. They're going to have the 30-second clock in. they got the weekend to prepare for Fresno State. We'll have that game Monday night, 8 o'clock, right here on TV10. Spartans win at 17-12 now. Bowling Green is 21-9. Tonight's game has been brought to you in part by Jack Dykstra Ford, Mid Michigan's largest Ford dealer. By Wendy's, now serving delicious bacon cheeseburgers. By Capital Federal Savings, with something better for your future. By Delta Dental, number one for a number of good reasons. By Farm Bureau Insurance Group, making your future a little more predictable. And by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. This has been a TV 10 Sports presentation. My boss can't resist a bargain. When he saved on a Jensen car stereo at Highland, he had to get something to put it in. He also saved on a Pioneer, Sanyo, Mitsubishi, and more. Now Highlanders have any car stereo sale.
Save over $15 on an 8-track or cassette AM FM car stereo. Only $39.42. Normal installation free. When my boss heard the sale was just four days, he rushed to Highland. Oh, here he is now. Goodness, he must have saved a fortune. Michigan, McDonald's Million Dollar Taste Game is even bigger for you. Because we're giving away special Michigan prizes. We're not just putting you in the money. We're putting you in the movies with this easy-to-use RCA stereo video disc system and 50 discs out of hundreds to collect from RCA or win one of these RCA video disc players and five discs. Every McDonald's in Michigan will be giving at least one player away. So come to McDonald's and play. There's something special in it just for you. Kids need to do things on their own, so parents need to let them try. But there's something families don't need. They don't need caffeine. That's why the 7-Up Company created refreshing Like Cola in regular and new sugar-free. Like doesn't add caffeine like the leading colas, and Like has a satisfying rich cola taste. You were terrific. You really did it. I did, didn't I? Like regular and new sugar-free. The taste proves you don't need caffeine. We're